Standing at attention flanking Auckland's northern motorway, Awataha's totem pole was meant to be a beacon for all cultures of the North Shore. But decades on, for some Foundation members, it symbolises loss and heartbreak. I don't go down. I don't know any Māori who was involved as I was at that time that goes near it. None of us do. It's such bad vibes, such bad karma. 30 years ago, Mary Roberts was full of hope and determination, which drove her and others to fundraise nearly $2 million to build a marae. I went on to their first uh, committee as a, as a member, and that's where I got involved in the serious fundraising. They employed an architect, Pepper Dixon Architects, and I took about a year off to take this prototype of the Marae complex around the churches. The people of the North Shore raised about $1,700,000 for that Marae. Now, funding came from other sources, but it's important to note the ratepayers and residents of the North Shore gave a lot to build that marae. But three decades on, members of that North Shore community are at loggerheads with marae management. In 2017, the Hui reported on the division. It's supposed to be a home away from home for the Māori of Auckland's North Shore. It's just like they've just had the door shut in their face and that is absolutely what everyone is over. I used to come down and just stroll in, say hi to the whanau, those sort of things. I don't feel like I can anymore. Uh, I don't feel like I'm welcome to do that. Mary says today's situation is a far cry from how this pan-tribal, multicultural marae started its life. During the 90s, it was really humming. We had a lot of subcommittees. We met regularly every month. Hui were held there for whatever purpose. It was open, it was functioning, it was accountable, it was transparent, and it was managed by the community. Managed by the community and endorsed in the early days by high-ranking politicians. But over time, Mary Roberts and others became increasingly concerned with the running of their beloved marae. And increasingly, there was a move to change the constitution a little from incorporated society. But what I think it began to fall apart in 2010, there was a move increasingly for the family to get involved. The family Mary is referring to are the whanau of Marae founders, the late Arnold Wilson and his wife Rangitinia. Today, Awataha is run by their son, Anthony Wilson, who is CEO. Its chair is his wife, Maria Amoamo. Public records show a series of trusts, incorporations and businesses registered to Awataha Marae. Some are no longer active, others are not up to date with their filings. The Wilson Fano are at the helm of all of them. But there is just one company that appears to be running the Marae's business, and that company is Awataha Marae Development. It's 65% owned by Anthony Wilson, the Marais Incorporated Society owns just 35%. Another business operating from the Marais is Archangel Music, owned by the award-winning musician Kingdon Chappie Wilson, who is Anthony's son. This is my studio at my Marais. According to online records, Awataha Marais Incorporated hasn't filed a financial statement since 2016. So then the big issue was how... Mary Roberts isn't surprised. She says she raised issues around paperwork and marae membership many years ago. I asked, what is the current membership of this marae? And there was no documentation, no record of any current membership. I said, why haven't we filed an annual financial statement? Because I actually contacted the registrar to find out, no, they hadn't, they hadn't for several years. And the third thing was, um, why aren't we holding regular meetings? A Māori proverb saying, people without a marae are nothing. A marae without people is wasted. Now, how true those words have become today. 
I won't go down. One day I will when it's returned to the people and I look forward to that day because I've seen too many of these dear friends here that worked so hard for that marae being unable to even lie there for a tangi. The issue of tangihana is symbolic to the breakdown between the marae committee and members of this community and that's because at the heart of this issue is the use of this whare nui for tangihana. The Marae Committee says that they can't have tangihana because there are no carvings on the whare nui. But members of the community say that's because there's a push, there's an emphasis for this marae to be used as a commercial venture rather than a community hub. The marae is hired as a conference facility and for overnight stays. Critics of marae management say hosting tangihana may at times require the cancellation of these types of bookings, something they believe management would be unwilling to do. And while Awataha has received tens of thousands of dollars in funding for carvings for the whare nui, it remains undressed. They were never completed which again began an investigation by North Shore City Council. But the tikanga seemed to be until that whare nui was completed, you couldn't hold tangi. Some say that was a kaupapa of Arnold, a tūhoi kaupapa, because Arnold was tūhoi. Others didn't hold to that, but that was the situation. There are various iwi who claim mana whenua status on Auckland's North Shore. Tūhoi is not one of them. Ngāti Pāwa, Ngāti Whātua and Te Kaurau Ā-Maki have po on the boundary of the property, signifying their connection to the land. But none of these iwi are able to utilise the marae as it's held by the Crown for the community. And for locals, it's meant holding tangi in garages and tents. Former Te Whānau o Awataha Trust Board member Andy Peters. I also wondered myself about the use of the marae as far as tangi goes, because we were getting a lot of inquiries. Can we take our two papaku there? And I found out that they'd only had one tangi there, and I was wondering, well, what is the purpose of that marae? Do you think that people from the community should be able to use it for a tangi? <sighs> the way I was brought up, the marae was there for the community. Everyone's use. As time went on, I started to realise, yeah, well, it's not exactly that, yeah. Andy Peters resigned from Te Whano or Awataha Trust in 2018 due to poor health. Did you ask why the marae wasn't able to be used by Pifano? Well. We'd already made some inquiries about it, you know, well, why? And found out that why they hadn't used the whare nui for tangi was that the carvings were not complete. And that sort of made me wonder, well, what's the hold up? I, I believe there was money made available. There had been approaches made to um, Pare Marimo or the inmates to do the uh, carvings and Things like that, and it just makes you wonder why, why, you know, the office were there. For the past six weeks, the hui has been liaising with Awataha Marae's chairperson, Maria Amoamo, in the hope of discussing these issues. Two weeks ago, Ms Amoamo agreed to allow an interview with a selection of Marae trustees. We were hoping to record those interviews today, but this is as close as we can get to Awataha Marae because at one o'clock this morning, we received an email from Ms Amo Amo citing a lack of trust in our reporting and warning us not to enter the marae. She also added, don't put your drone up in our airspace, don't ignore the private property notices at the front and don't break the law. Despite ongoing issues at the marae, including rate arrears and strong opposition from mana whenua and members of the North Shore community, in 2020, Crown Land Toitu Te Whenua Land Information New Zealand agreed to renew Awataha's lease for a further 33 years. That decision is now being reviewed. Awataha currently is a failed entity. We won't go there until it's returned back to the people to run it.